You're a shopkeeper. Are you going to let me in? How about hello? Okay, yes. Hey, I'm from the local association. Hey, I know you. Your son married so and so who married so and so who, well, I'm related to. You. But be that here and there. Now, we're going around, and we know that you're a patriot from the get go. We're going around, and we're asking people to sign this not to import British goods. Now, he's a shopkeeper. What do you think's on his shelves? Ah! Right? So for me as a farmer, it's no big deal, right? I'm not selling anything. For him, it's his lifestyle. It's a totally different animal, right? He's like, oh, yeah, well, you know, I kind of, well, maybe not. And then I got three other guys off my shoulder. And they're like, oh, of course, right? They start chiming in. This is what you call peer pressure and communal pressure. Chris is passionate about history and about his kids. He is enthusiastic for the profession and a great ambassador for that. And he is an exceptional colleague and is wonderful to work with. He is a teacher. He is a father. He is a cross-country coach, both girls and boys. But he truly understands. We call him a professional educator because he truly understands the dynamics of effective interpersonal relationships among students and staff. He has very high expectations for his students just because the stuff that we did in class was never just like busy work. He actually did want us to think about stuff and challenge us and every student was, he thought was capable of achieving more. I guess what I really like is that he's challenged me a lot. And it's not necessarily, Bobby, this is what you should do. It's here are some things that you can consider. And maybe we want to consider these points. And kind of like we do with our students, Chris does that with his teachers. And for me, that's been great because I've had to find my own solutions. And, and then Chris is there in the background kind of cheering us on and supporting. How did that go? Or at the end of the day, he'll lean in and go, Bobby, 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 and, and grab my attention. and. How's it going just to take the pulse? And um, I think that's another thing I really admire about Chris is that he, he takes the pulse of all of us constantly. And as a teacher, that's just so huge for me because sometimes we, we're focused on the students and we forget that we need to be pushed along as well. And Chris is just so good at doing that. I remember when he was winning Best High School, the um, Best High School Teacher from Chesterfield County. They had interrupted like um, the class, and we had the longest period, so you think, okay, it's not a big deal. But it was really close to the AP exam, and he was just, he was grateful and honored, and he's so humble, so he, doesn't, so he tries not to like say too much, but um, he was so mad too. You could tell he's like, you guys are taking time away from my students, I need to like help them, and the AP exam's coming out, and we're like, we got this, don't worry, Mr. April. I think he was named Region 1 Teacher of the Year because he absolutely deserves it. If there's anyone in the state who deserves that title, it's Mr. April. He has, he balances a billion things. I'm pretty sure he's like co-writing a textbook. Um, he helps with the college board, the AP exam. He teaches this, he does like um, track, cross country, all that stuff. He balances a billion commitments and is still the best teacher you will ever have. He's going to talk to you about life. He's going to make you interested in history. He's going to do everything he can to make sure he's a perfect example. He's the kind of person that anyone who aspires to be a teacher would look at him and go, like, that's what I want to be.